The Chronicles of Narnia will soon join the fantasy streaming war with House of the Dragon, The Rings of Power, The Witcher, Percy Jackson, Aragon, and much more. Netflix announced way back in 2018 that they had the show. That's four years ago, and I'm asking what's going on? Is Narnia in development hell? Has it been cancelled? We want answers. Narnia is one of my most anticipated shows. There's a reason my little ginger boy cat is called Aslan. I love these books and I want an adaptation that is true and faithful to them, but at the same time is well done and can bring in new fans. But before I get into this video, if you like what you see and you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you want to throw a like on the video as well, I would really appreciate that. I will be covering Narnia if and when it comes out and so much more. Just check out the channel, I'm sure you'll find something you like. But yes, Narnia was purchased by Netflix way back in October 2018, that's four years ago this month. And supposedly they spent around $250 million, but that number was never confirmed. And that's up there with how much Amazon spent on The Lord of the Rings. And the success of shows like Game of Thrones and now House of the Dragon has highlighted how lucrative fantasy can be, especially with iconic IPs. House of the Dragon and Rings of Power have just finished their first seasons and millions and millions watch both shows. And all these big studios are snapping up book series to turn into TV shows. And this is the first time the rights to all seven Narnia books have been held by one company at one time. Probably the most famous adaptation is the early 2000s movies. They'd done the first three books but never got the chance to make the silver chair. And there's been other adaptations like the old BBC show I think it was the 1980s. They never finished the series either, but Netflix have bought the rights to all seven books, and they plan on a multi-year deal, TV shows and films. But yes, like I said, we don't know anything about the series really. In 2019, Coco co-writer Matthew Aldrich was announced as the creative architect, basically the Kevin Feige of this series. So that's the first step. Check. But after that, almost nothing. In January 2020, Douglas Gresham, the stepson of C.S. Lewis, who is also a producer for this series, and is probably the man that signed the deal, knew nothing. Total silence from Netflix. Apart from their French Twitter page mention it now and then, and other social medias. But it's kind of getting to the point where it feels like the countless Star Wars and DC films that were greenlit but never came to be. Guys, it's been four years since Narnia, and since then we've had Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. That was announced in November 2017, and it's already filming its second season. House of the Dragon has just done their first season, and they're moving on to season two. The Witcher, which was also 2017, I believe, is on season three. And even The Last Airbender, which is also a Netflix production, and was announced, I think, one month prior to Narnia, has already filmed and should be releasing next year. So Narnia has been left out in the cold. No news, no writers, no cast, nothing. It almost seems like they're having major problems behind the scenes. But I do think it will happen one day, as there's just so much money involved. It cost Netflix a dragon's treasure trove for this series, because Narnia is a classic story, and I believe it's up there with the highest selling fantasy books of all time, up there with Harry Potter and The Lord of the Rings. And I've kind of got the feeling that Netflix bought the rights to Narnia before anyone else could. They were part of the major bidding war with HBO and Amazon and all that for Lord of the Rings and they missed out on that. And I'm kind of getting the impression they didn't want to miss out a second time. So they just slammed $250 million down and stuck their hand up and said, I'll take Narnia. But they had no plan, they just bought it then and then they'll deal with it later. Of course they can't sit on their hands forever. I'm sure they have a contract with C.S. Lewis's estate that says they have to do something in so many years or the rights go back to the estate and then they don't get their monies back. But fans at this point are getting very impatient. I understand it does take time, but some communication would be appreciated. Guys, I love the Narnia books, and I actually enjoy the movies as well. I remember seeing the first one at my school, and I find Prince Caspian and the Dawn Treader have their moments, but they also have major issues. I don't think the quality is as high as the first one, and they really start messing about with the source material. And I think a lot of us will have that fear of Netflix. The biggest fear we have is woke Narnia, for a modern audience, or Netflix cancelling it after three seasons. Guys, I'm not religious at all, but I want this series to respect the source material and the author's beliefs. I just want a good adaptation of the book I love, all seven books, and I think that is one of their biggest challenges. 
the Narnia books are told over a vast timeline with ever-changing character lineups. For example, High King Peter is the lead in the most famous story, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. He returns for Prince Caspian, then drops out until the final book, The Last Battle. And that is a very difficult structure for a TV show and to sell to an audience. But I also think they will expand the story out. They'll have the Pevensey kids as kings and queens in their older lives, in the golden age of Narnia. Something that is touched upon in The Horse and His Boy, but it was only a small taste. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with Netflix expanding the story, as long as it works and doesn't take away from the magic of the original stories. Because you guys know that Netflix will alter Susan's fate, or at least expand on it or explain it more than the book's done. And I'm sure if the series ever gets to that, I'm sure it'll be a major talking point online. And guys, making this video, I'm kind of starting to see why this is taking so long. It's making my head hurt just piecing it all together for a video. And then of course you've got chronological order versus release order. Do you start with Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe or The Magician's Nephew? Personally, I think Wardrobe is the safest bet, but maybe you can have parts of Magician's Nephew in a prologue, which is the creation of Narnia, and then you can do the main story later on. It's honestly not an easy decision, and I am interested to hear what you have to say. You can do time skips, just like House of the Dragon has shown, and I'm all for movies and miniseries, prequels and animation or whatever, but I think the starting point has to be to get a powerful voice and somewhat of a famous actor for Aslan, and then work your way from there. Wardrobe is the most iconic story, and it's probably one of the best ones in my opinion, and I think it's the easiest to make into a big epic season of television. But as long as it still has the heart and soul of the book, I don't want them to turn it into a Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones ripoff with just Narnia makeup on. But guys, I want to know your thoughts on this. If you were in charge of the Netflix Narnia series and films, what would you do? Would you start with Wardrobe? Would you start with Magician's Nephew? Who would you cast as the voice of Aslan? But no matter what, I think another major challenge will be fans accepting recasting. Guys, it's never easy to recast iconic roles, especially ones you grew up with, but I think this Narnia series has to be a complete reboot and stand alone from anything else. It's a tough task, but if it's done right, it has the potential to be one of the best shows out there. And of course, once we start hearing more news, there will be more videos on the channel. But until then, there's only so much I can say, but I suppose I could do bonus videos on casting. I do have a couple ideas about who I would cast in this series, especially Jadis the White Witch. The two actors I've always pulled towards were Ruth Wilson and Gwendolyn Christie. But we'll have to see what Netflix does. Right now we're still in the dark, but we do have a couple shows coming up for us on the channel. We've got His Dark Materials, we've got The Dragon Prince, The Witcher Blood Origin, and so much more. If you want to get all that stuff, make sure you subscribe. Now that House of the Dragon and Rings of Power are over, I've got more free time to do other stuff. And I have so much lined up, you might not want to miss that. Yes guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.